In this video I'm going to look at a 2019 question from the Leave Insert. It's question 6 on fuels and thermochemistry or energetics. So it starts off in the usual way, looking at just some information, mainly recall information based around some fuels and organic chemistry. So first of all it's basically asking for a definition. This time you don't have to give the definition, you're asked just to give the term that you usually would have to define. So molecules that have the same molecular formula but a different structural formula. Well, we know those as structural isomers. Now, if a molecule has the same molecular formula, then it has the same number and type of atom present in the molecule. If the structural formula is different, it just means that those atoms are arranged differently, i.e. the bonds are different within the molecules so atoms are bonded slightly differently as you can see with a b and c there why do a b and c separate in the same fraction in the distillation of crude oil so when you distill crude oil that means you separate out a mixture of compounds based on their boiling point as it's crude oil the boiling point between those molecules will be dependent on the intermolecular force and with crude oil all those intermolecular forces are van der Waals, forces of attraction. So why might they have the similar boiling point? Well, they've all got the same number of atoms, or they're around the same size. So therefore, the intermolecular forces will be around about the same. Now, they will differ slightly, like the longer chain molecules might stack together a bit better than those that are highly branched, etc. Okay, but overall, it should be the same. So the same number of carbons there, with the same size molecules as well. So we can pretty much just say they're same molecular formula. Especially because they're hydrocarbons. Now, if they weren't hydrocarbons and they had the same molecular formula, then that could give them quite a different boiling point, dependent on the type of intermolecular force. So explain why which of ABC is most likely to auto-ignite in a petrol engine. So auto-ignition, as I said before, is when the fuel pre-ignites. So it ignites a little bit too easily in the internal combustion engine. Now, the ones that ignite easier are the ones that are straighter chained molecules. And looking at these compounds here, A, B, and C, we can see that A there has a straight chain molecule. So that molecule there is just pentane. That one is most likely to auto-ignite. So it has the longest unbranched chain. So it's a straight chain molecule, so it'll probably ignite a lot easier. I'll just add that we're dealing with question A here. Now, give the systematic UPAC naming for A, B, and C. Okay, A has got one, two, three, four, five carbons, all on a straight chain, um, no double bonds or triple bonds, so five carbons is pent, it's an alkane, so it's pentane. B has got one, two, three, four carbons in its longest unbranched chain. There. So the stem of that name will be butane. Now, there is a one carbon with three hydrogens coming off the second carbon. So that is going to be 2-methyl butane. Now, C again, if we look, the longest unbranched chain is three carbons on, so that is going to be a propane, and it has got two methyl groups coming off carbon number two, so we can call it two comma two dimethyl propane. Dimethylpropane there uh, would suffice, okay, because both of those methyls have to come off carbon number two. If it came off carbon number one or carbon number three, then that is just extending out the longest unbranched chain, and so we wouldn't be going with a propane stem there. So, question B. Name the oil refining process in which one molecule of alkane W was converted into one molecule of octane and two propane molecules. So, you're getting a longer chain molecule 
and you're basically chopping it up into an alkane and an alkene. Here you've got the two alkenes. So here we're dealing with cracking. So it's going to be catalytic cracking. Okay, usually a zeolite catalyst is used for that, but you don't need to know. Catalytic cracking, where we get an alkane and an alkene. Now, deduce the formula of W. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write the formula of the product. So we've got two propene molecules. Now, propene, as it's three carbon alkene, is C3H6, because the general formula for alkenes is CNH2N. So we've got two propenes. And we've got octane. Well, that's oct is eight, so eight carbons, and it's an alkane. So the general formula for alkanes is CnH2n plus two. So we need to double the carbons. That's sixteen. Add two. That's eighteen. So we produce one octane and two propenes. Now, because of the law of conservation of mass in chemical reactions, the reactant molecule that must have started would have 8 carbons and 2 times 3, which is 6. So it has 14. And the number of hydrogens is 18 hydrogens plus 2 times 6, which is 12. So it has 30 hydrogens. So the formula of W is this. So now we're going to go into part C. What is the advantage of adding tetraethyl lead to petrol? Well, the advantage of adding lead compounds to petrol was to reduce the amount of knocking that occurred, or reduce auto-ignition. Why was this used in car engines discontinued? Well, it was discontinued because lead compounds are toxic, most likely carcinogenic. Okay, so now we've got our calculation question. So we've done all the rest of the fuels question there, so I'm just going to put this up to the side. So tetraethyl lead burns completely according to this equation. So I'm just going to rewrite the equation to start with. So you've got two tetraethyl leads plus oxygen. And you're forming carbon dioxide because the carbon burns to form carbon dioxide and the hydrogen is burned to form water. And the lead burns to form lead oxide. So the heats of formation of tetraethyl lead, carbon dioxide, and water are, are that, respectively. Calculate the heat of reaction for the combustion of one mole of tetraethyl lead. So we are asked to calculate the enthalpy, or the heat of combustion there, which is delta Hc. We're told that the heat of formation of all of these is there. So what I'm going to do is whenever I answer these questions, I'm going to draw out a Hess cycle. The enthalpy of formation is forming one mole of a compound from its elements in their standard states. So I'm just going to put down the elements down here. So we have got lead, we've got carbon, we've got hydrogen there, and we've got oxygen. If you want to balance, you can. There are two leads. There are 27 oxygens. There are... 40 hydrogens and there are 16 carbons. You don't need to write how many there are there. I'm just doing it for the sake of it. So Hess's law states that if you want to find out the energy change for a particular reaction, let's say that reaction there, well, the overall energy change is independent of the route taken, provided that the products and reactants are in the same conditions in the same state. So here, that yellow route is what I want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, is there another route that I can go from my reactants to the product where I'm given the energy change and so equated? So I'm told that the heat of formation of tetraethyl lead is 52 degrees. What that means here is, I'm just going to put that in red, like I've done previously. It means that on forming tetraethyl lead, the energy change for that particular reaction is plus 52.7. Now there are two of those. So overall, that energy change is going to be 52.7 times 2, which is 105.4.
I times it by two because it's telling me that the heat of formation is 52.7, but I'm forming two moles of it here, so I need to multiply that by two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the rest of these and do the same thing. So oxygen, I don't form oxygen because it's already in its elemental state. So the heat of formation of oxygen is zero there. Now, the heat of formation of carbon dioxide, I'm told, is minus 393.5. Okay, but that's for one mole. I've got, I'm forming 16 of them. The heat of formation of water is minus 285.8. And I've got 20 of those that I'm forming. And the heat of formation of lead oxide is minus 219.0. And I'm forming two of those. So ideally, to get the energy change for the yellow arrow, I would just add up all of the um, ones that's highlighted in green here. But Hopefully you can see that to form delta HC, that's going to be equal to. I'm going to call this delta H1, this delta H2, delta H3, delta H4. Now the delta there just means the change of energy. So to calculate delta HC, I need to add up all of these. But you can hopefully see that the reason I've drawn the first delta H1 in red here is because actually the information is given in the wrong direction. Ideally, as my green highlighted arrow is going in this direction from reactants to products, I want this arrow to be going in this direction too. But as it's going the wrong direction, I want that arrow to go in that direction, but as it's going the wrong direction, all I need to do is instead of adding delta H1, I just subtract it. So the delta HC is going to be minus delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4. So that's going to give me a figure of 52.7 by 2. And we're going to subtract that, so I'm just going to put a minus, plus 16 by minus 393.5 plus 20 by minus 285.8 and plus, I'm just going to move these over a little bit, plus 2 by minus 219.0. Um, and so if you're doing this in the exam, what I do is I would actually calculate these all out individually. So the minus 52.7 by 2 is minus 105.4. This 16 of those is minus 6. So we're just plus, and it's going to be a minus, because we're adding on a negative number. 6,296. And we're going to be adding this one on now, which is minus 5,000. 716 and we're going to add this negative number on which is minus 438.0 and when you add those numbers together you get an energy change of minus 12,555.4 and it's kilojoules per mole now that's for the equation given but if you remember in the question, it says calculate the heat erection for one mole of tetraethyl lead. But here I'm doing it for two moles. So what I need to do is I need to divide that by two to get for one mole of tetraethyl lead. So it's equal to dividing that by two minus six two seven seven point seven. And so that is how we do that calculation.